Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes and I'm the National School Sports Champion. Key Stage 1 is a crucial age of physical education. It lays the foundations for the years ahead. Children need to learn to think about their bodies. Tottenhall Infant School in Enfield has put a lot of thought into achieving this, as you will see. Physical education is, at this very young age, is about um, developing the whole child. It's not a discrete subject on its own. It permeates through everything the children are doing. So the message is get them active, get them, get their hearts beating, um, get them enjoying moving. So we have timetabled in a, a minimum of two hours every week for every child in Key Stage 1. And Key Stage 1 is the critical transition period where a child's school career really begins. Having only just left their cosy home corners in reception class, the move into Year 1 can be alarming for some children. They have to deal with a much more formal classroom environment, which includes proper desks and structured lessons, and a need for the concentration skills to sit down and work. Physical education can play a huge part in helping to smooth over the bumps. Jump. Jump. Children moving up from foundation stage into key stage one for them, it's quite a challenge. And we noted that a few years back when we stop, I stopped and the staff stopped and looked at what these children were saying to us because they weren't happy. They were saying, um, Mrs. Clark, I can't play anymore. Things like that, which actually is very telling and we realised that we needed to rethink very carefully our transition from foundation stage into year one. On the outside, put it a bit nearer. So now the school plans this move to make it less turbulent for the children, and PE has a significant role in achieving this. I think transition is a traumatic time for children, but at Tottenhall we've worked really hard over the last few years to make sure the transition is as seamless as possible. So in the autumn term we mirror the practice in foundation stage, we plan um, an indoor and outdoor experiences for the children so that they can follow through and it's not such a big jump for them to come into year one. When you get to the top, see if you can go across, see if you can go across. The reception class children get to familiarise themselves with the gym apparatus. By the time they come into year one, they are not afraid to use it. Put your arms out to bat, help you jump and your knees, good girl, that's lovely, well done. It actually helps to accelerate their learning because, in fact, we're not wasting time in year one teaching the children about the bars and not being afraid of them. By the time they got, they're in year one, they have taken their risks, they know the limits of their bodies and they use it appropriately. So the pupils are gently eased in, but with classes of 30 children, it's quite an undertaking for any teacher to observe what's going on. Tottenall has an answer for this too. They split the classes in half, so there are just 15 children in the hall, while the others are outside with a teaching assistant. The children get to use the apparatus more, there's no queue in, they're not standing around. I can identify children that need specific support and support them better with, um, in a longer time, and um, it works out really well. And more time can be spent checking the pupils' understanding of what they are learning. you warmed up now and you're ready to you do some apparatus work. Oh, put your hands on your heart. Can you feel your heart? Yeah. My heart is full. Oh, mine's going to Who knows why it's good to warm up really properly? You can tell me. Um, um, so you don't get hurt. That's a brilliant answer because you've just been doing your work with Mrs. Armet uh, sitting down at the table. Now we've come in, we've got to tell our bodies it's time to start our peer lesson. Splitting the class in two has revolutionised the way Sean feels about teaching gymnastics. It's something that children really, really want to do and they really enjoy it. They know in the week when it's going to be their PE lesson and if there is a change to routine, they go, oh, isn't it our PE day? So I think if you've got children's enthusiasm and you've had the appropriate training on health and safety, then um, it's a lovely thing to teach. Now I want you to show me some ways of travelling on your hands and your feet. Go carefully, stay in the green and yellow square, please. 
This is a perfect environment to acquire and develop good body management skills. We're going to put them together now. I want to have two moves. So get thinking of your first move, and then when I say change, I want to see you all change to your second move. Still moving with your hands and your feet. Use all the yellow and green squares, see as off you go. First, children learn one movement. Then they learn to select and apply two movements together. The rest of the hall, change to a different Woo! way, please. Think this helps to develop way. their thinking Fantastic. skills and encourages them to make decisions independently. And seal stop. Classes like this are designed for pupils and teachers to collaborate in their approach to PE, so that the children learn to evaluate and improve their performance. Right, Tolo, that was a really nice jump, but how could Tolo make that jump even better? Remain, what could he do? Like when he goes down, he can stretch his, he can bend his knees and make his arms like out like an aeroplane. And pupils are encouraged to develop assessment skills for learning. The class watched Leonardo rotating, and this little girl decided she wanted to do it too. One of the best ways children learn is through doing things and by trying things out, thinking for themselves, coming up with different ways of doing things always moves children on. And um, in the lesson that I taught yesterday, one child tried something and then the other children were copying and having a go for themselves. While half the class is in the gym, the other half is outside learning ball skills with a teaching assistant. Today they are learning to roll the ball in a controlled manner. They are being taught the difference between rolling the ball to a partner and rolling it against an opponent. Remember, we're rolling and not throwing. Whoa, sorry. Rolling and not throwing. This provides an excellent foundation for team games. Who found that one easier? Me. Ninety-two percent of the school's intake is from ethnic minorities. PE has proved to be a great tool for breaking down barriers and building cooperation. For those who don't have English as a first language, it's particularly helpful that it's so visual and can be easily demonstrated. 66% of Tottenhall's intake don't speak English when they first arrive. But this doesn't deter the staff. We don't really see it as a challenge. Um, children learn from each other they learn from the provision that we make for them. They learn through hands-on, uh, first-hand experience where that is well-resourced and well-planned by the practitioners. Children just take on language, another language, so much more easily than adults do. Um, they have that capacity brain capacity to do so and we have children coming in at the beginning of the year absolutely no English whatsoever and midway through the year you listen to them they can carry on a conversation in English. Learning to speak a new language is one thing but at key stage one children need to learn to write it which involves huge concentration and fine motor skills. Just show me a little bit of robot walking now. Right from the beginning of the children's education the school has a solution to this and the key is, again, high-quality physical education. Every term, every teacher sits down with special needs coordinator to track the progress of each individual child. Where a child is identified in that process of not making progress, the question will be asked why and in what area. And some children, and it appears to be boys, um, their fine uh, motor skills are not as well developed as the girls and they're having difficulty using pencil and paper. So we looked at what strategies were available and one of the strategies um, that we took on board a few years back is, is Tiger Teams. Alongside curriculum PE, different schools have different ways of developing motor skills. In Enfield, they use Tiger Teams six-week programmes of physical activity sessions for children with poor coordination. They happen every morning at nine for 20 minutes. The movements are selected to strengthen different parts of the body. This cone helps motor planning and spatial awareness so that the children are better able to negotiate walking across a classroom without bumping into things. Side. 
Side to side. Nice and slow, nice and straight. Okay. Push right. your tummy. Oh. Push yourself. Push. Push. One, two. Push. And now go all the way round. All the way round. It's thought the exercises may help rewire the brain. The movements are balanced using both sides of the body so that the left side and right side of the brain are stimulated to work together and the children can better interact with their environment. The teaching assistants take the class, but they are trained by a physiotherapist funded by the local authority. Cindy Bowles devised the course and the teaching assistants can always go to her for further help. All these children have low tone, so they tend to lock their knees when they walk and do anything. Yeah. So this is to get them to actually yeah. learn how to move. Mugger who skips with her knees rigid. Mm. Oh, gosh, that was yeah. difficult, yeah. yes. Mm. So it... Tiger team sounds something that's fun, and that's the whole essence of the thing, that they are fun and different, and these children are made to feel special. The confidence that they achieve in, these, in the Tiger teams is, is just as important as their physical ability as well. And lessons are planned with this in mind. This is great, the kids love this, but what you need to watch is that, with, especially with a very large child, that their hips, the heaviest part of them, is actually right in the middle. Leg straight, pushing with your hands nice and slowly, off you go. And this scooter board helps pelvic trunk stability, which strengthens the core of the body and allows the children to sit still. The children see the benefits too. I can hold my pen better now. I, I am in Tiger Teams. It um, helps you with your homework. Getting stronger and our muscles growing. But it's not just their strength which improves. Because there are never more than six children in a Tiger Team at once, the individual attention they get helps their concentration. And the morning is a perfect time for them, preparing them to return to their ordinary classes. They look forward to going. They know exactly what they're going to do, which is really good for lots of our children. And when they come back, they're alive, they've woken up, they're ready to learn. Wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. And shoes and socks, OK? And the statistics speak for themselves. Of the six pupils in year two who have completed the Tiger Team programme, all have achieved or exceeded their predicted teacher assessment levels in English and maths at the end of year two. But the results don't just show at school. We also get feedback from parents who say their children will, are better behaved at home or they can now eat with a knife and fork or they can now dress themselves. And they, too, in turn, have actually noted that the improvement in their child is not just an academic improvement. The school has scored by encouraging high levels of physical activity. Transition into year one has been eased by introducing the reception class to the apparatus. The teaching of key body management skills is ensured. And by organising and running a group for children with motor coordination problems, many other issues have been addressed. So, by placing PE high on the agenda, Tottenham has found a holistic education solution that really gets results at Key Stage 1. OK, we want standards because we need our children to be reading and writing, but we want our children to be achieving um, and enjoying their, their education. Achieve and enjoy, that's what we're about.